Once upon a time, a baby named X was born. This baby was named X because no one could tell whether it was a boy or a girl. Its parents could tell, of course, but they couldn't tell anyone else. You see, it was all part of a very important secret scientific experiment known officially as Project Baby X. The smartest scientist had set up this experiment at a cost of exactly $23 billion and 72 cents. This might seem like a lot for just one baby, but when you remember the cost of strained carrots and stuffed bunnies and popcorn for the movies and booster shots for camp, let alone 28 shiny quarters for the tooth fairy, <gasps> You begin to see how it all adds up. Besides, long before Baby X was born, the smart scientist had to be paid to write the official instruction manual in secret code for Baby X's parents, the Joneses. On the day the Joneses brought their baby home, lots of friends and relatives came over to see it. None of them knew about the secret experiment, though, so the first thing they asked was what kind of baby X was. When the Joneses smiled and said, It's, it's an, an X. X, none of the relatives knew what to say. They couldn't say, Look at her cute little dimples. On the other hand, they couldn't say, Look at his husky little biceps. <laughs> the relatives all felt embarrassed about having an X in the family. People will think there's something wrong with it. Some of them whispered, there is something wrong with it. Others whispered back. The official instruction manual had warned the parents this would happen, so they didn't fret about it. Besides, there were other problems too. Toys, for instance, and clothes. On his first shopping trip, Mr. Jones told the store clerk, I need some clothes and toys for my new baby. The clerk smiled and said, Well now, is it a boy or a girl? It's an X. Mr. Jones said, smiling back. But the clerk got all red in the face and said huffily, Well, in that case, I'm afraid I can't help you, sir. That night, he and Ms. Jones consulted page 2326 of the official instruction manual. It said firmly, buy plenty of everything. So they bought plenty of sturdy blue pajamas in the boys' department and cheerful flowered underwear in the girls' department, and they bought all kinds of toys. The head scientist of Project Baby X reminded the Joneses to see page 4,629 of the manual, where it said, Never make Baby X feel embarrassed or ashamed about what it wants to play with. And if X gets dirty climbing rocks, never say, Nice little X's don't get dirty climbing rocks. Likewise, it said, If X falls down and cries, never say, Brave little X's don't cry because of course nice little exes do get dirty and brave little exes do cry no matter how dirty x gets or how hard it cries don't worry it's all part of the experiment but then it was time for X to start school. The Joneses were really worried about this because school was even more full of rules for boys and rules for girls, and there were no rules for X's. The Joneses spent weeks consulting their instruction manual until finally X was ready. The Joneses helped X button on a nice new pair of red and white checkered overalls. X brushed its teeth and combed its hair and remembered to put a napkin in its lunchbox. The Joneses had asked X's teacher if class could line up alphabetically instead of forming separate lines for boys and girls. And they'd asked if X could use the principal's bathroom because it wasn't marked anything except bathroom. X's teacher promised to take care of all those problems, but no one could help X with the biggest problem of all, other children. You couldn't tell what X was by studying its clothes, and you couldn't guess whether X had a girl's short haircut or a boy's long haircut, and it was very hard to tell by the games X liked to play. Some of the children tried to find out by asking tricky questions like, Who's your favorite sports star? That was easy. X had two favorite sports stars, a girl jockey named Robin Smith and a boy archery champion named Robin Hood. Then they asked, What's your favorite TV program? And that was even easier. X's favorite program was Lassie, which stars a girl dog played by a boy dog. After school, X wanted to play with the other children. How about shooting some baskets in the gym? X asked the girls. But all they did was make faces and giggle behind X's back. Boy, is she weird, whispered Jim to Joe. How about weaving some baskets in the arts and crafts room? X asked the boys, but they all made faces and giggled behind X's back too. Boy, is he weird, whispered Susie to Peggy. That night, Ms. and Mr. Jones asked X how things had gone at school. X tried to smile, but there were two big tears in its eyes. Once more, the Joneses reached for their instruction manual. Under other children, they found, what did you expect? Other children have to obey all the silly boy-girl rules because their parents taught them to. Lucky X, you don't have to stick to the rules at all. All you have to do is be yourself. P.S. We're not saying it will be easy. 
The next morning, Little X went back to school with a brave smile and a clean pair of red and white checkered overalls. There was a seven-letter word spelling bee in class that day, and a seven-lap boys relay race in the gym, and a seven-layer cake baking contest in the girls' kitchen corner. X won the spelling bee, X also won the relay race, and X almost won the baking contest. Except it forgot to light the oven, which only proves that nobody's perfect. One of the other children noticed something else, too. He said, X don't care about winning, and X don't care about losing. X just thinks it's fun, playing boys stuff and girls stuff. Come to think of it, maybe X is having twice as much fun as we are. From then on, some really funny things began to happen. Susie, who sat next to X in class, suddenly refused to wear pink dresses to school anymore. She insisted on wearing red and white checkered overalls, just like X. Overalls, she told her parents, were much better for climbing the monkey bars. Then Jim, the class football nut, started wheeling his little sister's doll carriage around the football field. He told his family that X did the same thing, so it must be okay. But the worst came when the twins, Joe and Peggy, decided to share everything. Their parents weren't one bit pleased with Peggy's wonderful biology experiments or with Joe's terrific needlepoint pillows. They didn't care that Peggy mowed the lawn better and that Joe vacuumed the carpet better. In fact, they were furious. It's all that little X's fault. Just because X doesn't know what it is. Or what it's supposed to be. It he wanted, wanted to, to get, get everybody, everybody else, else mixed, mixed up, up too. too. Finally, Joe and Peggy's parents decided to call an emergency meeting of the School Parents Association to discuss the X problem. The Parents Association said that X must take an examination. An impartial team of experts must examine it physically and mentally and issue a full report. If X is test showed it was a boy, it would have to start obeying all the boys' rules. If it proved to be a girl, X would have to obey all the girls' rules. And if X turned out to be some kind of mixed-up misfit, then X must be expelled from the school immediately! The school would have to decide what to do about X. On the night before X was to be examined, the Joneses tried not to let X see how worried they were. X just smiled at them both and hugged them hard and didn't say much of anything. At exactly nine o'clock the next day, X reported to the school health office. The principal, along with the committee from the Parents Association, X's teacher, X's classmates, and Ms. and Mr. Jones waited in the hall outside. Inside, the impartial team of experts had set up their famous testing machine, the Super Psycho Medical Social Cultural Meter. It was terribly quiet in the hall, almost spooky. Once in a while, they would hear a strange noise inside the room. Or X. The Joneses thought. Serves X right. The parents' committee thought. I wouldn't want to be in X's overalls right now. The children thought. At last, the door opened. Everyone crowded around to hear the results. X was smiling, but the impartial team of experts looked as if they were crying. What happened? Everyone began shouting. Had X done something disgraceful? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Did X flunk the whole test? Or just the most important part? Oh dear. Sighed Miss Jones. Oh dear. Sighed Mr. Jones. Shh. Shushed the principal. The experts are trying to speak. Wiping his eyes and clearing his throat, the one expert began. In our opinion, young X here. Yes. 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 Shh. Young Shh here. I mean, young X here is just about. Just about what? Let's have it. Just about the least mixed up child we've ever examined. Yay for us! yelled one of the children, and then the others began yelling too, Yippee! clapping and cheering and jumping up and down. The parents committee was angry and bewildered. How could X have passed the whole examination? Didn't X have an identity problem? Wasn't X mixed up at all? Wasn't X any kind of a misfit? And why was the impartial team of experts crying? Don't you see? He said. We're crying because it's wonderful. X has absolutely no identity problem. X isn't one bit mixed up. As for being a misfit, ridiculous. X knows perfectly well what it is. Don't you, X? The experts winked. X winked back. What, what is, is X? X? We, we still, still want, want to, to know. know, shrieked Peggy and Joe's parents. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Well, don't worry. You'll all know one of these days. And you won't need us to tell you, said the experts winking again. What? What, what do, do they, they mean? mean? They mean that by the time it matters which sex X is, it will 
won't be a secret anymore. Needless to say, the Joneses were very happy. The Project Baby X scientists were rather pleased too. So were Susie, Jim, Peggy, Joe, and all the other children. The Parents Association wasn't, but they had promised to accept the experts' report and not make any more trouble. Later that day, all X's friends put on their red and white checkered overalls and went over to see X. They found X in the backyard playing with a very tiny baby that none of them had ever seen before. How do you like our new baby? X asked the other children proudly. Oh, it's got cute dimples, said Jim. It's got husky biceps, too, said Susie. What kind of baby is it? Asked Joe and Peggy. X frowned at them. Can't you tell? Then X broke into a big, mischievous grin. It's a Y, 